what's up everyone? My name is Josh Carney, but some of you may already know me from YouTube as Music Tech Help Guy. And I wanna welcome you to my Logic Pro 11 MIDI Essentials course. Now, whether you're a beat maker, a composer, or songwriter, maybe you're in a band, or maybe you're a producer, understanding MIDI is key to unlocking your full potential as a music creator, especially in the world of digital audio workstations like Logic Pro. Now, there are entire textbooks that have been written that break down every iota of the MIDI computer language. And while we will hit on some of these more technical topics throughout this course, my main goal here is to show you the essential workflows and tools you'll need to effectively record, sequence, and edit your musical ideas. In this first video, I'll explain what is MIDI and I'll break down MIDI message structure. MIDI is a communications protocol, so essentially a computer language that allows musical devices, whether they be hardware or software, to communicate with each other. MIDI was first introduced in 1983 by Dave Smith, the founder of Sequential Circuits, and it completely revolutionized music production in the 80s because it allowed for a non-proprietary universal way to communicate musical information. This includes the pitch of a note, the dynamic or velocity of notes, along with many other expressive messages. Real quick before we get started, I wanna let you know that there are three ways you can watch this course. You can watch it completely free on YouTube as the videos are released. But if you wanna get early access to this course and all of my other courses, you can become a YouTube channel member and that will get you early access to all of the videos before they're released publicly on YouTube. And a third way is to purchase the course from my website, logicproguide.com. If you purchase the course, this allows you to download all of the videos completely ad-free. And I also include demo projects so you can work along with me. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And in the early days of MIDI, what you'd typically do is use a hardware or software sequencer, and you'd use this sequencer to either type in, program in, or play in MIDI sequences. Those MIDI sequences would then be fed out of the software or out of the hardware into a hardware synthesizer, which would interpret those musical messages and then output an audio signal, which would then be recorded to tape and later on digital audio. Today, the workflow is much simpler. We can record our MIDI sequences directly into modern DAWs like Logic, and the MIDI data is stored on the computer and internally fed through a software instrument like Alchemy, Drum Machine Designer, or the Studio Piano. The software instrument then outputs a digital audio signal, so everything is handled in the box. To understand how MIDI works, it's really important to understand MIDI message structure. And while there is a lot of technical jargon I could include, I'm gonna keep this to a minimum and focus on just the most important details. Most common MIDI messages, such as a note on message, are composed of three pieces of digital information or bytes. A status byte followed by two data bytes. The status byte determines the type of MIDI message being sent, with the note on message being the most common. The data bytes relay specific information related to that command, related to the status byte. So for a note on message, the status byte defines that this is a note on message. The first data byte tells you the pitch of that note, and the second data byte relays the velocity of the note, which often determines the volume or dynamic. Computer protocols are binary, so you're working with zeros and ones, so two options. MIDI messages use an 8-bit system, so it's fairly simple. So if you take 2 to the power of 8, this gives you 256 possible combinations. But you could also think about this as 0 to 255. To keep commands separate from musical values, MIDI assigns different ranges. So status bytes always use a value range of 128 to 255, whereas data bytes always use a value range of 0 to 127. This means each data byte can have 128 possible combinations. For example, MIDI pitch is represented by a value from 0 to 127. So lower notes are going to be closer to 0, and higher notes are going to be closer to 127. 
For example, middle C, that's note number 60. If I go up one half step to C sharp, that's 61. If I go up one more half step to D, that's 62. And if I go backwards from C down to B, that's note number 59. Velocity is a really important factor with note on messages because it often determines the dynamic of the note, sometimes directly controlling the volume of notes, but not always. For example, if I play softer, I get a softer dynamic. And that's because the notes that are being sent have lower velocity values. Maybe they're down in the 30 or 40 range. Whereas if I play faster, that's a louder dynamic because I'm pressing the keys faster and that's sending a higher velocity value, maybe more around 100. Now, there is a bit of a misunderstanding about velocity. Some people will say that velocity is how hard or soft you hit the keys, but it's truly how fast or slow you hit the keys. It does you know, happen to work out where if you hit the keys fast, you're also hitting them hard. And if you hit them slow, you're hitting them more softly. And that's where this misunderstanding comes from. The sensors that are under the keys are actually sensing how fast or slow you're playing the keys or how fast or slow you're hitting or striking the keys. So there's a reason why velocity is called velocity and not something like key pressure. Now, the existence of a note on message implies the existence of a note off message, telling the instrument that you have released the key. A note off message is very similar in structure. The status byte says that this is a note off message. The first data byte defines the pitch that's being turned off. And there is such a thing as note off velocity, how quickly or slowly you release the key, but it's not always used. In fact, often a velocity of zero is interpreted as a muted note, so you'll hear no sound. The time interval between note on and note off messages is what determines the length of notes. Other types of important MIDI messages include continuous controllers. These don't communicate notes, but are generally used for expression and modulation purposes. For example, the modulation wheel, faders, and knobs on your MIDI controller are all continuous controllers. And if you're using a sustain pedal, this is a continuous controller as well, although it is a special subset of continuous controller called a switch controller. Just like pitch and velocity, the position of continuous controllers are represented by a value between zero and 127. For example, modulation wheel all the way down is zero and all the way up is 127. With faders, all the way down is zero, all the way up is 127. And with knobs and encoders, all the way to the left is zero, and all the way to the right is 127. Pitch bend is another type of MIDI message that allows you to apply pitch modulation to your instruments. All of these messages are transmitted serially in a single stream of data, and they all use 0 to 127 for their data byte values. If you've ever worked with MIDI in Logic or any other DAW, this is why you see so many 0 to 127 values associated with MIDI-based controls. Anytime you adjust the velocity in the piano roll editor, it's 0 to 127, or 1 to 127 since 0 is a muted note. Even the pan knobs in Logic have a 0 to 127 range. So that wraps up part 1 of my Logic Pro 11 MIDI Essentials course. In the next video, I'll show you different types of MIDI controllers, we'll dive a little deeper into continuous controllers, and I'll also show you how to set up your MIDI controller in Logic and how to check and make sure that it's working properly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Remember, if you want to get early access to this course and all of my other courses, you can become a YouTube channel member or purchase the course for download from my website, logicproguide.com. Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.